All right, students, this almost brings us to the end of our chapter force coverage of reactions and aqueous solutions. Now, I realize that sometimes we feel frustrated with the sheer quantity of things that we have to learn, particularly in this very intensive chapter that has covered so much material in such a short amount of time. It reminds me of the time back when my wife worked as a customer service supervisor at a large company that made fitness equipment. One of the employees under her supervision was an elderly woman who worked a second job relaying mail for the IRS. Oddly enough, she f said that one day she received someone's tax return in which the individual who had sent it to the IRS had actually put all the papers in filed correctly into an envelope and then urinated into the envelope before sending it in the mail. I'm not sure how to respond to that. <laughs> But having seen the way the IRS sometimes behave, I can at the very least empathize with the man's frustration with the Herculean federal organization. After today's lecture, you guys should be able to calculate an aqueous solution's molarity and concentration, use molarity to calculate grams of solute, explain how to prepare aqueous solutions with specified molarities, and use mass relations in titration reactions. With that said, let's begin. Molarity, which is often abbreviated as a capital and italicized letter M, is a way of expressing a solution's concentration. Simply put, molarity is the moles of solute divided by the volume of solution in liters. Hence, we see that molarity's units are moles per liter. Now, to do a molarity concentration problem, we have to first remember that molarity's units are moles per liter. Next, we look at what information, especially units, that we're given. And third, we determine what we're being asked to find, especially what units the final answer should have. And last, we use dimensional analysis, focusing on units to convert what we're given into what we're being asked to get. In other words, we use dimensional analysis to move from our starting point to our destination, focusing on units. Units! Which brings us to a wonderful example problem. How many moles of hydrochloric acid are present in 35 milliliters of a 4.5 molar solution of hydrochloric acid? And another. How many milliliters of a 5.1 molar HCl solution are needed to obtain 0.1 moles of HCl? How in the world do we do these problems? Well, don't worry. I'll show you. Beginning with the first one. How many moles of HCl are present in 35 milliliters of a 4.5 molar solution of hydrochloric acid? To begin, as I almost always do in a dimensional analysis problem, I start with the value that I've been given that has no denominator units. In this case, that would be 35 milliliters. Now keep in mind that the unit molar actually does have denominator units because molar is short for moles per liter. So we've written down our 35 milliliters that we've been given, and we have to ask ourselves, what in the world are we trying to get to? Well, the question asked, how many moles of HCl are present in blah, 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 bling, bling, blah? Hence, the final answer that we get to should have the units, moles of HCl. So I'm going to focus on units and then insert the numbers afterwards to convert what I'm given into what I need to get to. What I'm going to do next, then, is place here a set of parentheses having proper denominator units and numerator units to cancel out what I'm given and move closer and closer to where I want to get. What units am I going to have in the denominator of my first set of parentheses? Well, of course, I'm going to have milliliters, because I want it to cancel out the milliliters up here. Keeping in mind that molarity has units of moles per liter, what units do you think I'm going to want to put up here on top? Well, it makes sense that I can directly relate milliliters to liters. So I could put liters up top and then insert my numbers. Are there indeed 1,000 milliliters in one liter? Yes, there are. Hence, I'm doing good so far. You'll notice at this point, though, that I'm not yet to my final answer, which is moles of HCl. I cancel out my two milliliter units, and I'm left with liters. So I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting closer. What units am I going to want to have in the denominator of my next set of parentheses? Well, of course, I'm going to want to have liters, because it will cancel out 
leaders on top. Now here's the tricky thing. What units am I going to want to have in the numerator of this set of parentheses? Keeping in mind that molarity, this capital M, actually is the same thing as moles per liter. I can put moles in the numerator. Is this a true statement? In other words, in this particular solution, are there indeed 4.50 moles in one liter? Absolutely. You'll notice now that I have canceled out all of these units. It has taken me to final units of moles of HCl, which is indeed what I want. I plug and chug with my calculator, and I get this answer of 0 0.158 moles. Let's do our second problem. How many milliliters of 5.1 molar HCl solution are needed to obtain 0.1 moles of HCl? Where in the world do I begin? What I'll do is I'll start with the value I've been given that doesn't have denominator units. Now while this isn't always the case, it almost always is. So I will throw that up here for us to consider. Now of course, I also want to keep in mind where I'm trying to go. It asks me how many milliliters of 5.1 molar at blah, 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 am I going to need to obtain blah, blah, blah. So the final answer that I get had better be milliliters. Now obviously, if I start with this value, 0 0.100 moles, I'm not yet to milliliters. How in the world do I get to milliliters? Well, I'm going to place a set of parentheses immediately to the right of this value. And what units will be present in the denominator? Of course, I'm going to want to put moles in the denominator. Now what of all of the things I've been given, other than the 0 0.100 moles here, has moles in its units somewhere? Of course, this capital and italicized letter M, molar, which is short for moles per liter. So I can put in the numerator liters, and then I can step back and insert my numbers. In this solution, are there indeed 5.1 moles in one liter? Yes, there are, because I've been given the value of 5.1 moles per liter. All I've done is flipped it upside down. Moles cancel out moles, and I'm now at liters. Now the question asked me to get to milliliters, not liters. I'm getting closer, but how do I move on? Obviously, I'm going to need to place an additional set of parentheses. What units will be in the denominator? Of course, they're going to be liters to cancel out these liters in the numerator. Now, what in the world can I put in the numerator? Well, keeping in mind that I want to get to milliliters, I could consider putting milliliters in the numerator. Is there a way numerically to relate milliliters to liters? Absolutely. As you should know, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. I have everything set up. I type everything into my calculator, and the answer that I get is 19.6 milliliters. To be fair, this should probably be expressed with only two significant figures to match this value that only has two significant figures. Here's some additional problems. How many grams of solute are present in a 15 milliliter solution of 0.736 molar potassium dichromate? And how many milliliters of 1.5 molar sodium phosphate contain 2.50 grams of sodium phosphate? In this particular case, I'm not going to do both of these examples, but we'll only do example A and let you try example B on your own. Now before we get into doing this problem, I have to point out one thing. This problem is asking us to convert 15 milliliters of this solution into grams. Now we've seen in our previous two examples that we can use molarity, moles per liter, to interconvert between volumes and moles. But how in the world do I interconvert between moles and grams? Well, as we learned in an earlier chapter, we do that using formula weight. So before I even get started doing my dimensional analysis, I am, just for the sake of ease, going to calculate the formula weight of potassium dichromate, K2Cr207. What is its formula weight? Well, each potassium atom weighs 39. I times that by 2 and add it to the weight of chromium, 52. And there are two of those. And then I add it to the weight of oxygen, 16. And there are seven of those. All added together, the total formula weight of potassium dichromate is 294 grams per mole. Now we're going to get into the dimensional analysis. I, of course, begin with the value I've been given that has no denominator units, which is 15 milliliters, shown here. And keep in mind where I want to go, grams. Of 
Of course, I'm going to place a set of parentheses just to the right of my 15 milliliters. And I'm going to ask myself, what units do I want in the denominator to cancel out milliliters here? Of course, I'm going to put milliliters in the denominator. Now, what am I going to want to put in the numerator unit-wise? Well, keep in mind that molarity, this capital and italicized letter M, is short for moles per liter. So if I'd been given milliliters, I'd probably better convert them to liters. As we should have memorized, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Now, obviously, I haven't yet arrived at grams. So I'm going to have to place a second set of parentheses here. What units are going to go in the denominator? Of course, I want to cancel out these liters in the numerator, so I'm going to put liters in the denominator. Now, what in the world can I put in the numerator here? Have I been given anything else in this problem that has liters somewhere in its units? Of course I have. I've been given this molarity. And keeping in mind that this capital and italicized letter M represents moles per liter, I can put moles in the numerator. For this solution, are there indeed 0.736 moles in one liter? Yes, there are. Hence, I can place this as shown here. I've canceled out my milliliters. I've canceled out my liters. But I haven't yet gotten to grams. I have moles in my numerator. So I need to place another set of parentheses here. What units are going to go in the denominator? Well, of course, I want to cancel out these moles right here in the numerator. So I'll put moles in the denominator. Now, is there anything that I've got in my problem or that I've figured out that has units of moles and something else? Well, of course, I have my molarity, which has moles per liter. But I've already used that. Is there something else I have? Yeah, I figured out the molecular weight, grams per mole. So for this particular compound, are there indeed 294 grams in one mole? Yeah, there are. And you'll note that by setting the problem up in this way, it leaves me with units of grams, which is indeed the units that this question asked me for to begin with. I plug and chug with my calculator and determine that there are indeed 3.25 grams of this solute present in the solution. We now move to a different subject, dilution questions. Now, dilution questions usually involve diluting a more concentrated solution, which is often called a stock solution, to prepare another solution of a lower concentration. I'll now give you some steps to guide you through how to do dilution questions. To help make this understandable, let's first pretend that solution A has a molarity of 5 molar, which once again means 5 moles per liter. And we've been asked, how many milliliters of solution A would you need to dilute to make 150 milliliters of a solution B that has a concentration of 2.5 molar? In other words, I've got this solution A that has 5 moles per liter. And I'm going to add water to it until it's diluted to be half that concentration, 2.5 moles per liter. How many milliliters of water am I having to add to this to get to the desired half concentration? So how would I answer that question? I'll show you how to do that now. First, we have to remember that the molarity of the stock solution, which we often abbreviate as M stock, multiplied by the volume of the stock solution, or V stock, is equal to the molarity of the diluted solution, molarity diluted, multiplied by the volume of the diluted solution, volume diluted. In other words, this equation right here. Now, I want to point out that I will give you this equation on your exam. Now, keeping that equation in mind, we have to remember that solution A is our stock or more concentrated solution. So we set up our problem using that magical equation, like so. Now, before I show you this, I want to point a few things out. According to this problem, the concentration of our stock solution is 5 moles per liter. I would put that in here for M stock, the molarity of the stock solution. It gives me the desired concentration of my diluted solution, 2.5 moles per liter, which I would put in for M diluted. It also gives me the desired volume of my diluted solution, 150 milliliters, which I would put over here. The unknown here is how much of my stock solution I need in order to make the desired diluted solution. Hence, I'll throw all these numbers in here and solve for V stock. Note, before going on, that I've converted this 150 milliliters to 0.15 liters over here so that my units match. That is crucially important in order to get the correct answer. From this point forward, I now just solve for V stock. 
I rearrange the previous equation algebraically, and I get 2.5 moles per liter times 0.15 liters times 1 liter over 5 moles. And you'll notice that all of my units cancel out except for liters, giving me a final answer of 0 0.075. Now, because the original question asked me to give my answer in milliliters, I should convert this final answer to milliliters by taking it and multiplying it by 1,000, as shown here. Thus, my final answer is 75 milliliters. Now, what in the world does that mean? What that means is that if I took 75 milliliters of my original stock solution and diluted it to a total volume of 150 milliliters by adding another 75 of water, my final diluted solution would have a concentration of 2.5 moles per liter. Let's look at another example. You've got a stock solution of 14.8 molar NH3, ammonia. How many milliliters of this solution would you dilute to make 1,000 milliliters of 0.25 molar ammonia? How do we do this? Once again, I remember this equation. Molarity of the stock times volume of the stock equals molarity final times volume of final. And then I just insert all of my numbers. 14.8 moles per liter is the molarity or concentration of my stock solution. The volume of the stock solution is unknown. 0.25 moles per liter is the concentration that I want to get to. And 1 liter, 1,000 milliliters, is the final volume I want to get to. Now I just rearrange everything algebraically and solve for the volume of the stock. You'll note that by doing that, I end up getting a final answer of 0 0.0169 liters, or 16.9 milliliters. What in the world does that mean? What it means is that if I started with my original stock solution of that was 14.8 molar in concentration. I would have to take 16.9 milliliters of that stock solution and then dilute that with water up to 1,000 total milliliters to get a final diluted solution that had a concentration of 0.25 moles per liter.